Welcome to this month's Tech Talk, where we'll be talking about and answering your questions all about student engagement as we get ready to wrap up another fantastic school year. Get ready to engage, empower, elevate, end of the year student engagement strategies. This is gonna be a Tech Talk full of some great resources that will get you and your students excited to wrap up the year and learn some new things. Start every day off with an on a scale of slide. You can put this up on your interactive board or up on the screen, whatever is the easiest for your students. Have them decide either showing with their hands or digitally what is their feelings for the day. So this one is an example of on a scale of squirrel going with our pirate theme so we know what that feels like. You could do on a scale of fast food, on a scale of tacos, on a scale of candy. You let the kids help you decide that's going to help it be more engaging. And then take a moment to have them share why are they feeling that way for the day and then move right in to start your day off. As we dive into some of these ideas for student engagement, think about what you want your class to look like, this or that. Now this or that could be another slide example or activity that you could do with your kids. I'm gonna be sharing with you some examples that are either low tech or no tech or high tech type of examples. The great thing is you decide what you wanna throw in, mix it up for your kids and have fun to the end of the year. As we take a look at these great examples and ways for students to be engaged, Think about that. To learn something, students need to do something. So when we say getting out of their seats, movement, games, activities, that's the kind of things they are going to remember in the classroom and remember what a fantastic educator you were. Here's a fantastic visual to help you see what activities I want to do with my kids and what is the type of engagement I want to see. Are they going to be at high attention, high commitment? Are they going to be just compliant, so low commitment, they're just doing what they need to do? We want student engagement that is going to make them want to come up with ideas to guide the next lesson. So let's see where we can get that level of engagement for your students. One of my favorite low tech type activity to get kids up out of their seats is clothespin bumper cars. This is an activity that just requires a bunch of clip-on clothespins that you can get at the dollar store for really cheap. Some note cards or paper for them to come up with some questions. And I'm gonna guide you through what that's gonna look like and why does it look like Mario Kart for this activity. If you go ahead and scan the QR code, you'll be able to access the directions for this, but I'm gonna walk you through it. So you're going to give your students two to three minutes on that piece of paper or on note cards to come up with as many open-ended questions as they can, either about the topic or unit you're studying, a review of all the things that they learned through the year, or it could be low stakes, just questions and things they wanna ask other kids about that they're interested in. You're gonna give each student three clothespins. This is where the Mario Kart piece comes in. If you've ever played Mario Kart before, there's the balloon activity where when he drives around, if he runs into someone or someone runs into him, one of the balloons is popped and you lose one of those to go. You only have three and then you're out. So these clothespins are gonna be clipped right onto the student's shirt or onto their sleeves, wherever you want. They're gonna go with their questions and you're gonna give them however much time you want. I would suggest starting with five minutes. Set a timer. Everyone walks around the room and they bump into each, each other. Not for real, but they're going to come up to each other and say, hey, my name is, hey, my name is. And then someone is gonna ask their questions first. They'll ask the student the question. If the student is correct, they keep their clothespin. If the student gets the question wrong, they have to take off one of their clothespins and give it to the person that asked the question. Vice versa, they ask the question again, and then from there, they'll drive off and run into another friend. Same thing. Now, they have the luxury of deciding if they want to keep asking that same question over and over, so it's a little bit of a game of strategy, or they can choose a different question on their list to ask the next person. Keep going until the timer is up, 
whoever has the most clothespins at the end would be the winner of that round and would just get a, a high five or something at the end. Now, what about those kids that run out of their clothespins at the end? They're still in the game, so they should not sit down. They still need to go and run into other people to ask their questions because if that person gets it wrong, they're redeemed and they get a clothespin back. So it's a great game to keep everyone up and moving. If you want to check out more great low-tech activities like this for a fun end of the year, check out the book by John Meehan called Fully Engaged. He's also one of the co-authors of the website EMC2 Learning. Check these out and see if you can try some of these awesome fun activities just to get the kids laughing and having some fun while also reviewing content that you've taught them. My next favorite low tech strategy to use with students are called edu protocols. Edu protocols are lesson frames that allow students to use any content with any grade level. And what's great about the edu protocols is it takes that level of stress off when they're like, what are we supposed to do today? You know, we're doing a new project or I have to figure this out. No, with edu protocols, if I say today class, we're doing a number mania. They're going to know because we've practiced these over and over some different ways to get those numbers with an icon in an infographic way for them to represent and remember those facts. So edu protocols are a great way to do this because I know some of you might say, well, hey, it's May now, right? Um, I'll try this next school year. Well, so many times I hear educators say that, and this is the time. It's always the right time to try something with your kids. This can help you set the stage for next school year with high engagement and high interaction with your kiddos. So let's find out exactly what number mania actually means. So you can see that image that I'm using there. This can be low tech by using chart paper and markers, or it can be high tech using Google Slides or Fig Jam or Padlet or something like that sort. Now this one could be open ended topic. So for this, these were adults and I just said, collaborate together in a group of three or four and share all about your team as individuals, you as a person, not anything about school content at all. So here's what they came up with, right? Stitches, states visited, haircuts, broken bones. You could give your students, of course, the content review of the topic that you've, they've learned about this year. So let's say we're gonna go back to fractions. So represent what you've learned about fractions in number mania form. That really makes them start to think, how are we going to do this? What are we going to draw for our icon? What facts are we going to include? So they need to work together to do this. So let's see an example and some other examples of what student work may look like. So here are some student examples. You can see here that we have one about Roman history through numbers, the judicial branch of government through numbers, something about the Thanksgiving parade, even though that's far out. You could really use any topic. And if you are really into using Facebook or social media to get ideas from, check out TikTok. If you search in TikTok, Number Mania, or Edu Protocols, you're going to see so many different classroom examples out there just to get your mind thinking and see how you can implement with your kids. What I love about Edu Protocols are these simple directions that help kids see that I need this, 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 and this, and this is the amount of time that we're going to do it in. So again, either pick chart paper or have a student in the group create a Google slide and share it with the member of his team so that way they all have access to it. You could also implement this idea of having a shared uh, Google Sheet where all the groups are putting their information in before they start creating. This alleviates that having the same fact and the same number for every single group because the kids will get really bored with that piece. So then you're going to say you have a certain amount of time to decide what information you're putting on there, the number, the picture that's going to represent it. For this example, I gave them six minutes. Now, for your students, you're probably going to be giving them more time than that. You could say probably 20 to 30 minutes, I would say. Pick how many facts they need to have on there, three to four facts or more, right? You decide depending on the topic that you're working on with kids. Then after that, timer's done. Even if their product isn't done yet, they have to stop. And that's part of this whole process is learning that there's deadlines and we have to work hard and we have to work together. 
to get it done. After the timer's up, each group will have one or two minutes. You decide what it's going to be, put a timer up to hold yourself accountable, and they have that amount of time to share out their facts. So they have to also present. They have to think about what are the main things we want to share, not just reading off their slide or off their poster, but finding a way to make it engaging and fun and see what happens. So this is one of the edu protocols that is a great place to start for fun. Here's another low stakes or low prep type edu protocol activity. And this one is so much fun. I've used this with kindergartners all the way up through adults. It's called the Fast and Curious. And with this one, you're going to be using game-based tools where the kids or students are going to be using a tech tool such as their Chromebook. So you again, pick the topic. It could be fun, summer vacation plans, movie trivia, or it could definitely be tied to the content that you're teaching. You're gonna give them two to three minutes to go through one of these game-based activities, which I'm gonna give you some examples next. Afterwards, they're going to get and see what their score was. That's their immediate feedback. I would recommend have them write that down in their notebook. And then as you, as the educator, you're gonna put up the whole class accuracy amount up on the board for everyone to see, even if it was 50%, right? Then we're gonna take a quick look. Was there any questions that everyone was missing? Let's just do a quick review of it. And then boom, start one more rep that you're gonna do with students. Maybe just one minute or two minutes this time. Again, have them see what their accuracy was, put it down. Hopefully they improved because now this is the second time we've done it. And then as a class average, I'll put that up there. Maybe we got 60% this time. All right. So it's building that internal self-motivation. Fast and Curious is a great one to do at the beginning of every class period. So I mean four to five times a week. It should only take five to eight minutes of your class period at the beginning. Now, the first time you do it, you have to explain it a little bit. But just using a visual like this, one rep, feedback, one rep, and maybe put in there a little pencil icon so they're going to record it. That's going to help them know what to do. So let's see what are some of those game-based activities or resources we can use to help us do this fast and curious. These are some of my top favorite game-based websites to use with students. And I will tell you, no matter what grade I've used them with, they all love it when you say you're going to do one of these, right? So we have Look It, we have GimKit, we have Quizzes, which has AI built into it. We have Quizalize, which also has AI pieces built into it. So these are examples. Of course, there's Kahoot and there's many other ones out there, but this is a great place to start. Now, you can start with finding something in their already made libraries, which will go ahead and let you just quickly find the content. Let's say we're doing movie trivia. Find one that's great, get the link, share the link to the students, and set the time for three minutes. Play, record, review, play again for maybe two minutes. Then the next day, maybe I pick Quizzes AI to use. That keeps it fresh so that way students are always on their toes and don't say, okay, we're always playing Blook It Gold Quest every single day. That will get monotonous for them. So try out some of these tools. Again, they have already content created libraries, or if you want to create your own, you can as well. If you're looking to learn more about those edu protocols and so many more, check out the edu protocol library. If you scan this QR code, it will take you to eduprotocols.com. And I will tell you behind me on my shelf are all of those edu protocol books. It's just a great reminder of ways to come back and say, why am I doing this this way? Kids will improve their scores. Kids will find that it's engaging. There's so many different ways to put this in there. And if you check out those books, there's ones for the primary age, there's social studies, there's math specific, and then there's all the ones that could be integrated to all subjects. So we just touched the iceberg with two of them. There's so many more out there. If you're looking to learn more about Edu Protocols, I am offering a summer course um, that you will be able to earn either contact or credit hours through for your teaching license. So please look to find out more or reach out for more about that course that is coming. 
Games are so much fun. So my next favorite resource to share is Digital Escape Rooms or Breakout EDU. I love the hands-on kits with Breakout EDU. You could make your own kits, but I also love the digital rooms as well. So scan this QR code. It's going to take you to a fun summer digital breakout that you can try first and then share that link to your students let them get into teams of two to three students around a Chromebook or together side by side and see if they can figure out the clues to unlock the locks. So what does this mean, right? So if you've never been to a real escape room, you have a time limit to play and that's how these work too. So you have that stress of trying to figure out those answers to get unlocked and to finish it before the time's up. With these digital escape room games, you'll get a clue that they'll have to look for patterns, colors, designs, way and order that things are in. And then as they figure out the codes, it will unlock it and move them to another clue. Now, what's awesome about Breakout EDU is they have content specific games, which tie to so many of the standards or just team building games because they have to use critical thinking, collaboration, problem solving, and they have that time limit. So we need to put all of our brains together in order to figure out those codes. So check this one out. Now, I'm going to give you some another resource because you may say, you know, right now I don't have the funds to do this. That's okay. You don't have to. I'm going to share with you my Wakelet collection of free escape rooms that you can try now. Go ahead and scan this QR code that will take you to the Wakelet collection of free digital escape rooms that are in Google Sites format with a Google form that students will enter codes into. There's also some other fantastic resources here for you to check out. So have fun, scan that QR code and assign one of those activities to your kids. I'm going to leave you with one last tip. Did you know? According to research, using games and teaching can increase student participation, foster social and emotional learning, and motivate students to take risks. So doesn't matter if they're digital games, computer games, hand games, where they're using paper, pencil, they're using clothespins, they're using eggs, whatever it is, get those kids up and moving and have a great rest of the school year. I am looking forward to hearing if you tried any of these resources and how your students responded with their engagement. What treasures did you unlock today? I'll see you next time on our Tech Talk.